Okay, so the next thing on our list of uh, to do's is uh, to overclock the GPU. So the graphics processing unit, um, you know, is, uh, is in charge of controlling processing the graphics. And a really big mod to do is to, uh, you know, increase the amount of megahertz that it has. So how do we know what to, what to adjust? So we, we're working with the Samsung Galaxy S4 right now, kind of an older phone, um, but the principles are still the same of how we figure this out. So the big thing you can do is like, you can look on the Wikipedia or online for that phone and see what it's made of. And of course the uh, M919 and the M919 V are pretty much identical phones. Uh, they're gonna have a lot of the same, same material here. Um, when it comes to the processor and graphics, but uh, so what we want to see is what system on chip is used and what CPU and what GPU is used in this um, in this phone. So here we have the M919 and the 919V and we scroll down and we find that, yep, it's using a um, Qualcomm Snapdragon 600, the APQ8064AB. That's the system on a chip. And then uh, then we see, you know, the V is the same variant using the same chip. Um, and then for the GPU, we're using this uh, Qualcomm Adreno 320. So if we bring up the wiki for that, what do we see? Well, as we scroll down to the 320, and there it is. And we see that uh, as we scroll over to the right here, it was using Snapdragon S4 and the Pro, and it's MSM 8960T and APQ8064. So these are important to uh, to remember. These are the numbers and, and letters and things that we're going to be looking for when we uh, when we adjust our phone. Um, I'll show you another way to look in the configuration files uh, here in a little bit. Um, you can also look up uh, here, here you see like commit. So you can look up commits that other people have done. And um, by looking at those other commits, you can see, you know, where where you should head to work on your kernel. So a couple of good ways to, to figure out what to work on. So we're just gonna open up the architecture folder because we're gonna be working on the architecture of the phone. Uh, we know that it's an ARM uh, processor, so we go ARM. And then we see all of these folders. We have, uh, you know, um, mock uh, DaVinci and mock Exynos and all these ones. And we uh, need to figure out where we need to go to work on this phone. And here we have mock dash MSM. And remember that was one of the things we saw, this MSM 8960. So that would be a good place to get started taking a look. And we see another number uh, that we're looking for is this 8064 AB. So we've got these these numbers to work with. So that's a good uh, good place to start. So we jump into our mock MSM folder. And uh, there's several files in here, and a lot of them apply to a lot of different boards. But here we see this board, this 8064. And we see different things. You know, we see the, the Wi-Fi, the storage, the regulator, um, you know. Uh, and these this board is that 8064 board that we saw there, and that 8064 AB board that we saw here. So it looks like we're definitely in the right place. Now it helps that I've already done this before, but I just want to show you how you can try to figure out to work on your own, um, you know, phones or tablets. <clears throat> so we want to adjust the GPU, the graphics processor unit. So probably looking in the GPU uh, file would be the uh, the first place to go. Now we're actually going to open it up in um, Diffuse, so I can uh, have it side by side with the work that I've already done, so we can just easily see that and look at it together 
there's our arch arm mock MSM, and we're looking for that board uh, 8064-CPU. So here we bring it up in the one that I've already already done, and then we'll go back and look at arch arm mock MSM board 8064-CPU in the uh, CyEngine mod version. <coughs> So uh, a lot of things in this file, uh, we have to be right where we need to be, but we'll, we'll kind of back up a little bit so we can see what's going on here. So, you know, your typical includes and uh, some frequencies and whatnot, um, core information, parameters, coefficients, more parameters for power, that sort of thing. Um, <clears throat> this is controlling everything that has to do with uh, the graphics card itself. Um, you can see there's some changes here, but that's that's not what we're focusing on uh, today. And even some changes that were made here, but that, again, it's not really what we're focusing on here. We're just looking at how do we um, overclock that GPU. So overclocking is, of course, inherently dangerous. So be careful with that. Um, you know, so what, what this uh, function here does is it controls the um, the power level and it has these bus frequencies and so you have zero one two three and and four and uh, that bus frequency then sets the GPU frequency so the default is um, 400 megahertz uh, processing power devoted to um, you know making drawing the graphics and uh, and so you can see there's actually quite a difference between, um, you know, the default and uh, the one that I have over on the other side. And you see, you know, here's the lower ranges, like, uh, you know, that zero is when it's sleeping, one is it's just just uh, starting, two is, is 200 megahertz, and three is 320 megahertz, and then four is 400 megahertz of power. So, uh, you can see that this one here, uh, the default for two is, is 200 and one is 128. So one is the same between both, but two actually move up on mine. Um, and then I, I move, I essentially move everything up one uh, step. So what we want to do is we want to change the CPU frequency from 400 megahertz to 487.5 megahertz. Uh, which would be about a 21% increase in our uh, in our output, which is pretty significant. That's that's a huge amount of change there. Uh, whenever you're doing changes like this, I recommend you start small. You know, um, you know, we could choose a lower number, like uh, 450 megahertz change, and that wouldn't be quite as aggressive. And you know, you would just test it out, see that it's working, and keep working your way slowly up to get to where you need to be. Um, typically, it would be a, a wise thing to do. Since I've already done this before, I know we can safely do this without blowing up our phone. Um, and so so we'll go ahead and set it to four, uh, 487.5 megahertz. Um, and we're not going to go through and change uh, you know, each step. We're just going to overclock the top step. Now, the other thing we have to change is we see down here for this um, this power level, this maximum frequency that we can have. And this is for our APQ8064AB. Remember, that's the, that's the board that we're using. And we want to set it to what we just made our, um, our settings to be. So this, this, you know, we know we're in the right place because it's this 8064, 8064, 8064. And then we see 8064 AB. So, so we're definitely working in the right place here. And we need to set this to the maximum that we just made our our uh, stage four frequency. Otherwise, we won't won't be able to reach it. It'll, it'll have a little bit of a problem there and be limited to the stage three frequency. Is I think what would happen uh, in that case. So we save that file there, um, but uh, we're not not quite done yet. So uh, if you look at the commit that I did before, you know, of course we changed uh, that GPU frequency, but then we need to adjust what's called the clock. 
So just changing those frequencies doesn't fix everything. We need to add uh, a clock frequency to the clock table for the GPU. And if you're not familiar with how kernels work and how processors work, uh, this might be a little confusing, but just setting it here like we are and setting the maximum like we did, that's great. We've now enabled that, but we haven't told the kernel that it can use it. So the kernel can only use what's listed on its table. So it's kind of like having uh, a new car in the garage, but nobody told you uh, where the keys were, essentially. So we open this clock 8960 file, and uh, we see that's what I did before. And how I knew to do that, um, you know, because that's not 8960. The system on chip says 8064. How do we know to go to that 8960? And here we see that 8960 when we're looking at that Adreno 320. So that, that clued us in to that's where we need to be. So we open that up. Uh, we're going to open up uh, both uh, the one that I did and the stock one here. So we can compare them again side by side. We do a lot of that. Um, just makes it easier so I don't have to type it all out. Probably mess it up. You know, um, but <laughs> this way we can just look at the code. Now this code right here, this is not what we're here to change right now. That's uh, that's very important, but that's for a future uh, video, hopefully. So what we have here is the table, the clock frequency table for the 8064. Um, you see this line is missing. Um, and it's, you know, for the 8960 AB and shared by the 8064. So we're just gonna insert this line. How you read these tables, actually it's, it's kind of complicated, but it's saying that frequency is going to use this power level of 15, and then this one and this two designator, which apply to a different table. So a lot of information right here. Um, and then as we scroll down a little bit, we see the F max for the, 3D effects uh, for the graphics card uh, for the 8064 AB and then for the 8064 uh, regular, um, you can see that we have to set that to the higher frequency. Now notice this is the 8064 regular right here. We don't actually technically need to change that because we're changing ours for the AB, but uh, it's, it's useful in this case because uh, other people could use this kernel as well, um, but you wouldn't actually technically have to do that. So now we've we've told the uh, kernel that that frequency is now available. That's a choice for it to to choose from, you know. And um, the rest of the commit that I have here is actually for other work that I did. Um, so not not what we need to change here. So okay. So we just uh, set our um, GPU to be overclocked. Um, we, uh, we went through the files here. We looked at how we figured out where we were supposed to go. Um, hopefully that'll help you and point you in the right direction uh, when you go to do this yourself. Um, if we go back uh, to our config, uh, I told you we'd look at how we could look that up. If we open up our, our config and we search, um, we see this 8960 right here, but the big thing is that config underscore arch, and that tells us MSM 8960 and APU8064. That's what we're using because that's the dash yes or equals yes. So those are the ones that we would want to look at. And if you have your kernel configuration file, you could just look in here for this config underscore arch and figure out what you need to uh, what you need to go look at to see what you need to adjust. So um, we're going to make clean before we build, and we're going to use this double ampersand to say, and when you're done with that, go ahead and MKA boot image. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the double ampersand. It just means and, or after you're done with that and, do this. And so we can see if we scroll up here, we're, we're done cleaning the build directory, and now we're going to um, be building. And I ran ahead and ran make clean because sometimes, I, I'd mentioned before, sometimes when you're building things, um, you should make clean if you've made some changes that it might not recognize. 
See, we didn't change the version of any file or anything like that. Uh, we didn't add any new files. So it may miss the fact that we've made a change here. So I like to make clean and uh, and go ahead and, and build from a clean build. <clears throat> Unfortunately, uh, that's gonna take, you know, uh, four to six minutes to complete, um, which isn't terrible, but uh, hopefully doesn't get too boring for you. So again, we've made a change that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work. Now, most likely it's going to build, but then you're going to have to test it out on your on your phone to make sure that it actually functions. Um, one of the, you know, um, interesting things about building is that, uh, you know, it's a lot of trial and error. And especially when you're overclocking, you really have to be careful. I recommend making very small adjustments at a time. Uh, or looking at work that other people have done, so you know kind of like what the what the um, max is that you can do. Um, you know, uh, here we we saw the maximums that we set it for. Um, let's see. Uh, anything else we could look at while we're waiting for that to build? Um, open our uh, CPU file again. Um, but also you can see like in, in this one, I, I, you know, we have this bus frequency four that I've stepped up and then notice that three, I stepped up to be above what was the normal. And then two, I stepped up to what was three and one I left down at the at the default. So <clears throat> just think about options. You know, if your user is trying to have a gaming phone, you're going to want higher frequencies. If your user is trying to, uh, you know, conserve on battery, they're going to want lower frequencies. So it's kind of a balancing act. You can't always win in every direction. Um, but uh, this is just going to step through the, the table to go up to these different frequencies. Uh, this uh, 27 megahertz, that's actually the sleep frequency when your screen is, is off. The GPU is just idling there at 27 megahertz. Um, so you typically don't want to change that because uh, you drop that too low, you're actually going to cause the phone to be unable to wake up from sleep. Uh, Sometimes people refer to that as the sleep of death. And so you do want to be careful with, uh, with bringing um, frequencies down. Uh, typically, I don't like to limit the frequency that they can go down to, because usually with an application like Kernel Auditor, they can just choose a lower frequency as the maximum frequency. So for instance, in this case, they could choose 320 megahertz to be the maximum frequency that they are allowing and uh, not have to, um, you know, use that high frequency that I set. So a good practice is to, um, if you do overclock, add your overclock frequency and then make sure the original frequency is in the table as well as a lower frequency uh, bus frequency so they can choose to just not use your overclock frequency if they so desire. Most likely if they installed your overclocked kernel, it's because they want the overclocked feature. Um, hopefully later we'll be able to talk about uh, voltages and undervolting in particular, uh, a lot of fun stuff that we can do there. But uh, hopefully you found this to be informative. Again, this is not exactly what every kernel is gonna look like, but it is just a generic idea of how, um, how you can figure out where you need to go and what you can look at to see what you need to change. So just be aware of that. And uh, again, make small changes, uh, test, test, test before you release it out to uh, other users. Uh, they might be a little less than forgiving if uh, it works good on your phone, but really didn't work out well on everybody else's. We're just waiting for this uh, build to complete.
and it looks like it's just about done. And there we go. So make completed successfully. And now we would just have to test it out on our phone. And there's our boot image. We're good to go.